we are on a quest. On a mission to find the native plant and animal species of southeastern Arizona. Join us today in search of the agave. What's that? Look. <laughs> Cruz, Cruz got the scent, I think. I don't know what he's scenting. Oh my god! Look at that! Over there! Okay, what we got over here is a prime example of an agave got an acatillo going right up along the side of it but hey sometimes that's how the desert works huh sometimes you got to share that space but the agave here is a succulent it's a perennial type plant which means it doesn't die off each year you know it just it stays throughout the ages until it so finally nice. until it finally passes on native of the uh, US southwest and Mexico and some species or even in South America and tropical regions. You'll find these in places that are hot and arid. They require little water. Some people may, uh, may think that they're related to cacti. They're not related to cacti, not even close. Some people often also confuse them with uh, aloe. They kind of resemble aloe, but again, not really related. Now the roots of the agave are these shallow rhizomes and they're really efficient at capturing moisture in the desert whether it be rain or dew condensation the leaves are in this rosette they have these big fleshy leaves that are coming up from the ground that store water for the plant if you feel the leaves they're pretty tough they have a hard coating on them that is going to help prevent evaporation and help keep the plant storing that water. And the plant has these sharp spikes along the edges of the leaves that are going to discourage animals from eating it. Although there are some caterpillars that still do munch on the leaves. You know, certain species will adapt to their environment, but then other species will adapt to that adaption, so <laughs> everything's got to have a niche out here. Agaves, they'll either grow from the seed or the plants will produce pups, which will grow from runners. Some species are known as what's called century plants because it just takes so long for them to grow over a, quite a number of years. And really the number of years that these plants will live really depends on the climate, the rainfall, overall plant health, soil conditions. All of that factors into how long these plants will live, how big they'll grow. You'll see the, uh, the stem or the, the mast of the tree growing from the center of the plant or the rosette. And sometimes these things can get as tall as 30 feet in the air. Really remarkable. Flowers will grow from the, the stem of the tree, but it only flowers once in its lifetime, and that's it. You might want to be around for that event because it's that it just happened that once. It looks like this agave just flowered, actually, so it's probably getting ready to die. This one doesn't have long left, unfortunately. Uh, these things also have suckers, usually, 
at the base of the plant and uh, that's often where you'll get a lot of the new growth. Agaves have so many uses and you might be familiar with some of them. You might have seen the agave nectar or syrup. They sell it at the grocery store and that comes from the sap of the plant. It's a sweetener. Tequila. You may have heard of tequila. What? Where does that come from? <laughs> that comes from the blue agave, and that is the fermented sap. I do that like I drink tequila. I don't drink tequila. <laughs> <laughs> These big, thick, tough leaves have been used for paper, that fiber that comes from the leaves, thread or cord for sewing, thatched roofs. Some cultures use the leaves to line pits that they bake things in. And the juice from the leaves actually lathers up in water, kind of like soap. It's an interesting use. Hmm. The spines on the, on the leaves have also been used for needles or pins, uh, nails even, or awls for basket weaving. And I think most of this plant is edible. The, the roots are, the leaves, um, the basil rosette where the leaves grow, the flowers are edible. And it was a major source of food for prehistoric indigenous peoples of the southwestern U.S. And they also used the plant as medicine. Tinctures made from the root were used to treat arthritis. Tinctures or teas made from the leaves were used for digestive issues or as a diuretic. And this big stalk growing out of the center can even be used to make a didgeridoo. One of those big tubes you blow in that makes the... Wow, 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 <laughs> wow, wow. wow. <laughs> but I think that just goes to show you like a lot of these desert species plants so many different uses food medicine and I think it's a testament to the type of plants that grow out here as well as the creativity and ingenuity of the indigenous people of the area making use of what was around them Absolutely. we've been wandering the desert for 40 minutes and 40 seconds looking for the fabled down agave. There is a giant agave that's fallen over on our property. And because it's fallen over, it's always tough to find it again. We'll get it though. Like an oasis in the middle of the desert, she waits for me. The beautiful Jessica and crew. Beautiful. The lethal protector. Way to go, buddy. Checking down agaves. I think he's allergic. Yeah, so we have this massive agave on our property here. Unfortunately, it's dead. It's already flowered. It's gone through its life cycle and it's fallen over. It was an impressive sight. I believe it was actually first standing when we were first checking out the property. It's one of the most prominent things that was growing here because it was so tall. It has since fallen over. Now it's just become a desiccated home for a lot of the critters around here. It would have been cool to have been here while it was alive. I think maybe we'll be growing some agave on our property. Not a chance. Mm. No, I think there's a good chance we could grow some agave. It's perfectly well suited for this area. It's perfect and, and there's so many uses for agave like the ones we mentioned. And like you mentioned, the dead agave gives a nice habitat for Creatures. Once that plant's fallen over and that um, and the dead decaying material sits on top of the soil, eventually it'll become food for the organisms inside that soil. So really it just becomes part of that larger food web. It becomes natural habitat, food for the soil, and it's just part of that natural cycle. Uh, so how long do you think it'll take for this to break down? In the desert here, it could take 
a long time for this to actually break down just because of the low rainfall. Could make this into a, a giant didgeridoo. Or a giant didgeridoo. Honestly, it might be more useful as a didgeridoo. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Wow, wow, wow. Isn't that how it sounds? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. We hope you found this informative, interesting. We got more interesting plants and animals to share with you coming up. What else? Did you talk about giving this video a thumbs up? No, but uh Hey, if you it. feel like it, give it a thumbs up. Share it. Share it, spread the word. It helps us out a lot. People need to know about agaves. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Let's get social. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Wow, 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 wow.